All right, uh, hello everybody out there in YouTube land. Um, this is uh, always a hard type of video to make, but uh, just wanted to say rest in peace to Ian McDonald, who of course uh, was a founding member of King Grimson, one of the best rock groups that's ever existed, and of course a uh, foreigner too, um, seven years later. Uh, 1976 is when Foreigner uh, was founded. So he was a co-founder of both those groups. Not many people get to say they were a founder of two of the, the biggest groups ever in their respective scenes. Um, he was a well-regarded uh, session musician predominantly. Um, saxophonist, keyboards, flute, a vibraphone, guitar. He was um, instrumental, no pun intended, in the created the creative uh, force of this record, the debut of King Crimson, one of the best debuts of all time, uh, without question. And um, born in 46 in uh, Austerley, Middlesex, England, and he passed away just a couple days ago on the 9th at age 75 due to cancer, another big loss to cancer. And, um, you know, I've been spending the morning listening to um, kind of one of the white whales uh, b gaps in my collection is um, the McDonald and Giles um, soul LP. I was going to say debut, but it was the one and only. Um, and yeah, I, I think it fetched like exorbitant amounts back when I was looking for it. And I remember I kind of want to check, like, rate your music or something, because it's like, I think it was like 15 years ago, I added it to the wish list, and, uh, yeah, I, I really like that one, especially the, the bookend tracks, um, so yeah, he only played on that first, uh, King Crimson record, and, uh, you know, him and Giles were a huge part of what made that sound, Giles stayed on for... A little bit more. He only played on a couple songs on the second LP. And uh, you can hear their influence if you listen to the McDonald and Giles uh, record, um, which is just called McDonald and Giles. And you can, yeah, you can definitely hear... It obviously isn't... It's not quite as lyrically dark, I guess, and it's not quite as lyrically complex, but the music is very complex and jazzy. Um, Sweet and Six, uh, or C rather, uh, which was written by Ian McDonald. That one's a, um, that one's definitely a highlight. Um, the two tracks, Flight of Ibis and Is She Waiting, weren't quite as good as I remember. They're, they're tender, you know, short, kind of slower songs. Um, still no slouch, but if you compare them to Tomorrow's People, which was sampled by the Beastie Boys, which is another band I like to talk about on this channel, uh, on Body Movin' there, uh, Hello Nasty 98, yeah, Tomorrow's People, that's, oh my god, that one's maybe the highlight. I remembered Sweet and Sea and Birdman being the highlight, but I think maybe Tomorrow's People is. Birdman's 20 minutes long, lots of tenderness, at the end it just kind of builds up. Uh, it's very classical influence. They were very talented guys, I mean, you know, Giles is drumming on the first LP, and, you know, all McDonald's work. Um, that, that's really what makes it a classic, and, um, In the Wake of Poseidon, I think is a good record, but it's a huge step down, and I think it's definitely the weakest of, you know, the, the classic Crimson era. Um, but again, it's still good. But, you know, I think Greg Lake, who I absolutely love, I think he gets a lot more of the credit for why the debut is so so good and so different than, you know, the paths they would take down the line, which um, I think produced some equally as good results. One of them is Red over here, and um, and McDonald played on uh, One More Red Nightmare, which is track three, and also on Starless, which I think are two of the highlights of that record. I mean, you know, that record's a classic, obviously, and um, the four more song-oriented tracks because Providence is more of a free jazz type thing going on. Uh, I mean, those four are four of the best songs composed in the 70s, right? Um, so he'd play alto, and uh, yeah, it's cool that they had him back. I didn't know that till very recently, actually. 
So that blew my mind. And then, of course, Foreigner is classic for a lot of people. Uh, he was on the three first LPs. So, you know, Feels Like the First Time and Cold as Ice and all those songs that classic rock radio has kind of run into the ground. Um, he's worked with Steve Hackett, uh, Emerson and Lake. They had an Emerson, Lake, and McDonald, I think, which was like a live thing. John Wetton he worked with. And uh, something I learned today, I thought he was kind of always a session guy and always a team player in a band. And that's kind of what he's known for. And people are like, well, he's composed soundtracks and stuff like that. But I didn't know that he ever released a true solo album. I thought McDonald and Giles was like a one-off, which it was. But I didn't know either of them did a solo record. Um, Giles, that was an archival one. But McDonald did one in 1999. And um, yeah, now I have to go find that. <laughs> Driver's Eyes, it's called. So... Um, yeah, anyway, I'd recommend that, and um, if any of you know McDonald for his work in Foreigner or for, you know, King Crimson, the first record, you can also hear him on Epitaph, which is a uh, great live document. Um, the sound quality is not as good as later live records, but it's way better than Earthbound, and um, it's good for the time. It's an interesting document, but anyway, if you know him for those two or three things... I implore you to check out the McDonald and Giles record, and uh, it looks like it's easy to get on CD now, but it's kind of my, uh, it's one of like 10 white whales where every time I'm digging in the record bins, I'm like, maybe this time I'll find it. Um, so yeah, I implore you to check it out. Thankfully it's streaming, I think, I think it was put on like Spotify and Tidal last year, so it's pretty recently that it was brought to streaming. I remember it being harder to get and, you know, being a teenager finding torrents of that and it's like finding a treasure kind of. So imagine finding it in real life. But, uh, you know, I know a lot of people do have it. I think it was repressed once, probably. But, uh, yeah, I can't believe it. Another one lost to cancer and, I mean, being in this time now, like all those great guys from the 60s, 70s, and 80s are, uh, you know, some of them are dropping off now. And it was really sad when we when we lost Greg Lake, of course, and John Wetton, and, oh, uh, yeah, some of these mighty, mighty crim people, and, you know, anyone that played in King Crimson is like a 10 out of 10 musician right there, so. Yeah, so, uh, peace, love, and respect to his family, and, uh, you know, just to, to celebrate these great guys, I think the best thing we can do is listen to them. So it's been kind of a somber morning. I've been just listening to the the McDonald and Giles and, you know, put this one on later, of course. And Anyway, much love to everyone out there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again for another video.